What is architecture? So architecture is, is uh, to my mind, um, uh, a kind of fascinating interdisciplinary pursuit. Um, you know, somewhere between, uh, of course, there's, there's the scientific side to our practice, which involves, or to, to being an architect, which is, of course, math and science and, and, and sort of data, you could say. And then, of course, there's the subjective side, which is more akin to, um, to art, sculpture, um, you know, uh, poetics, uh, and so on. Uh, and I think those two, those two sort of um, vectors uh, uh, converge uh, in, in, the, in this thing we call architecture. Um, and, and, and they can't really exist without the other, which is why the sort of symbiotic relationship between um, technology and art uh, is, is really the basis of what it means, I think, to be an architect. What can architecture do? So I think because of that, uh, that dynamic, Architecture is capable of, of doing uh, a great deal. It, it, it in fact is is very much um, linked to the to the human condition um, because in, at the end of the day we are in fact a kind of convergence of of uh, you could say technology and, and art. We are mm -hmm. uh, the result of both a kind of set of rational predictable behaviors, but at the same time uh, very much. Uh, poetic and metaphysical and, and involved in, in other sorts of aspects of, of being. Um, and I think if you think of it that way, architecture is capable of um, really dealing with the human condition in a very profound way, um, be that either through something as prosaic as uh, a sort of, you know, shelter and, 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 and uh, utility, uh, but by the same token, uh, something that's much more tied to um, other kinds of uh, less uh, or more ineffable aspects, uh, like the, the, the quality of, of being in space, uh, the, um, the sort of profundity of, um, of dealing with uh, physical form, with urbanism. Um, so, so architecture has a wide sort of variety of possibilities uh, when one really considers that it is really, um, at, it, at its kind of essence, uh, a sort of navigational tool for, for the human condition uh, moving, you know, through, through, through space and, and the world. Uh, what is your architectural position? So, you know, I've always, uh, we've always, my, my partner and I and our firm at Asymptote have always steered clear of, of sort of holding true to a particular position or dogma or dialectic or or, or ism, uh, and, and the reason for that is that it's allowed us to uh, maintain a kind of versatility and a kind of um, alertness, let's say, uh, within the discipline as to, in terms of the work we're doing. I, I think one of the problems historically, and, and this is really the result of history theory uh, as a way of understanding architecture in terms of packages and moments and, and positions and so on, that's not to say those things didn't exist. They do, and they're very strong and, and very important to look at, sort of, especially in hindsight. But in the moment of being an active agent in the discipline, I think it's a little bit dangerous to position yourself uh, in, in a particular uh, place. Um, I, I do think, though, that we're influenced by positions around us, uh, and those positions, be they, you know, uh, sort of parametricism or post-structuralism or, you know, late post-post-post-modernism, uh, you know, uh, are all, of course, influences and are moving around us and people are sort of moving in and out of these different sorts of, let's say, spheres. Um, but I think even for anybody who might be labeled in terms of one of these kinds of uh, places, it's important to sort of stay, um, stay sort of peripheral to that, uh, at least intellectually. Um, to allow yourself to, to really, you know, work and to do research and, and to dig deep into, into problems and projects. And the reason for that actually is because, um, and more, now more than ever perhaps, I mean, maybe, and again, it's, it's hard to say because we can look back in, in history and say, oh yes, yeah, so, you know, modernism was, you know, post-war and important and, and, and happened for a particular reason and was tied to particular vectors and so on. Um, but I think it's really important to sort of look at the times we're in and realize that they're so in flux, and I'm not saying that there weren't other times historically that were in flux, but 
Um, there, there's so much going on and so many uh, strange convergences between um, you know, technology, socialization, uh, notions about urbanism, climate change. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a kind of a, a wild moment in terms of these, these sort of, um, let's say, weather systems of influence. Um, so you're really, it's really a bad idea to kind of situate yourself within any one of these um, and, and sort of say, well, I really hold true to just this position, and this is because it can easily dissipate into something else. Um, and I think the only reason we really see positions, quite frankly, in the here and now, as opposed to historically, uh, are really tied to marketing and, and positioning oneself uh, to, to get more work or to be within a certain kind of sphere of influence. Um, and that's, you know, something else that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of let's say skeptical of, is, is I, I think if you can, you know, so it's like the old adage, if you believe your own press, uh, you know, you can become a little bit swept up in, in the sort of uh, flavor of the month kind of marketing approach to what it is you're doing. And I think at the, at the very core, and that's what I said at the beginning about what architecture is for us, um, you, you really have to understand that this, this kind of, you know, beautiful, wonderful convergence of, 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 of technology and art and, and thinking and, and, and sort of scientific beliefs uh, that we call architecture uh, is, a, is, a, um, is a continually um, fluid and, and, uh, meta and sort of shape-shifting entity uh, that, that we're part of. Um, and so to stay vital in that, I think you have to also be kind of lucid and, and uh, quick, quick on your feet. What is your design method? So, you know, our design method in some ways is, is what every architect's design method has been throughout time, I guess. Um, but at the same time, um, maybe with some kinds of particular variations, nuances, or, or sort of uh, you know, tweaks. Um, I think in the end, uh, the design, <laughs> design method for us is, is a matter of a, a kind of delicate balance between um, you know, knowledge and intelligence uh, and, and sort of uh, uh, deeper thinking about a problem coupled with intuition and um, sort of risk-taking and, and maybe at times even uh, kind of naivete um, that, that takes hold and finding that, that kind of delicate balance between those things, um, which allows, I think, allows the work to, you know, be, it makes, makes for a more interesting set of possibilities. And I think if, if you open to that kind of um, design methodology, let's say, uh, it's risky. You know, I, I have to say that, that part of being architects like we are at Asymptote and what we've done historically um, is, is really to some people's taste, you know, a little bit too risky or too uh, uh, kind of... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not so easy to put it into a kind of box. Um, and, and taking those risks, of course, isn't sort of the, the best kind of way to go in terms of, uh, let's say, a kind of business model or a, or a strategy. Uh, and you wouldn't see it in other industries necessarily. Oh, maybe you see parts of the same methodology in, in advertising. Um, you see it at a certain level in filmmaking. Of course, art practices know this uh, methodology very well. Uh, its introduction into architectural practice is always a little bit dubious. Um, and so that's why we actually, it's funny because the other day in my office I was saying to, to our office, as a kind of, we had a kind of internal meeting about our philosophical approach to the work, about our history, and, and I said, you know, there's a kind of schizophrenia in a, in a contemporary office like ours, and that is sort of running between, on the one hand, there are moments when it feels like a corporate culture, corporately structured, dealing with clients and fees and, you know, all kinds of business strategies. And then there's a kind of flip side, which is almost the diametric opposite, which is almost like an art practice, um, where it's an atelier, where it's experimental, uh, where people are, are, are being asked to take risks, um, and, and where sometimes we make mistakes, and, and mistakes are part of the equation. Uh, and, and in fact, I think it was a little bit of a shock to some of the people in my office who are more corporate-minded to say that making mistakes is okay and we really should sort of sometimes even consider those as being the key focus. Um, uh, and, and I think it's, it's that kind of, uh, again, merging, uh, much like the definition of architecture for me, um, 
that allows us to have a, a methodology, and, 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 it, and it comes out quite clear. I mean, there are times, of course, where uh, we have a sort of internal presentation and everyone thinks that we're at the moment of sort of, you know, completeness, and all of a sudden, and it's usually from me, uh, a comment comes which kind of throws the whole thing into the wind, um, and it's very disconcerting, um, but it's a methodology. It's, it's a methodology to sort of get to, um, you know, to, to continually and con ask questions and try and push the envelope as much as one possibly can. Uh, but then again, tempering that into that, that weird interstitial space between uh, a corporate culture and, a, and, and an art atelier. And, and to find that line is, is the most important and the most difficult thing to do in practice. And as a, as a kind of body of work, production, which are both. Mm -hmm.